My sister, baby Jeanette, had peaches and cream skin and blue eyes. She took after our Irish father, my mother said. But I knew her hair belonged to our mother, for it was jet black. She died before I was born in 1961. My mother told us how she would cradle baby Jeanette in her arms when she cried. She thought she was unsettled, but she was more than unsettled. She had a heart condition. My mother watched baby Jeanette take her last breath. Through my mother's eyes, I watched my tiny sister's wairua take flight. A soft pale leaf on the wind The leaf cast a shadow over my mother. Yet it didn't stop her loving others, including the young family she took into her Devonport home, giving John, Maud and their baby a roof over their heads. John's now an acclaimed artist, with paintings in galleries across the world. Last week, my mother caught up with him and Maud for the first time in 56 years. He may not remember me, but remember he did. This lady took me and my wife and baby in when no one else would. She gave us the two front rooms and moved her family to the back of the house. He hugged her close. When I asked my mother if she was happy with John's gratitude, she snapped at me. But Tess... It's me who's grateful to them. John and Maud helped me when baby Jeanette died. They were so kind. A circle has closed. Te fare tangata in a puro tu in a ngako in a rangi marie go te faia go te faia o te au o te au. So Tess, I'll let you speak to your story, but what would you say are some of the key messages from it? Kia ora Stella. I think that one of the main things that I tried to convey in this story about my mum losing her baby, my sister, was that loss and grief actually isn't something that is cast aside after a tangi or a funeral. Actually, I think it's something uh, that we experience throughout the lifespan and different things touch upon the memories and bring up those tears and um, and also we celebrate the tupuna or the person that's died as well uh, throughout the lifespan. Um, and I think what the story conveys is that loss and grief recovery can come in all forms. In my mother's case, when the hospital rang to tell her that baby Jeanette was dying, she couldn't get to the hospital because the Harbour Bridge actually hadn't been built then. And so she relied on the lovely uh, family boarding in the front of her house, the Blackburns, to look after her. They spoke to her kindly, they listened to her, they made her lots of cups of teas, and in this way she was helped to make it to the morning 
and she was actually able to see her baby before she died. Now, all these years later, uh, my mother was able to celebrate the fact that she could reunite with her old friends and thank them and acknowledge them uh, for the love and the kindness they showed her because that has kept her company all through the years. And loss and grief transcends race, class, gender, ethnicity, sexuality. It doesn't cost anything to be kind.